Hi, so this is uh, a sort of a, an add-on video to my previous video on lighting and, and uh, deck maps. So I, it was just to explain the lights, which I uh, there was rather too much to uh, go over in the last video. So uh, I thought I would go a little bit deeper into the lights I used. And this all arose in that I was using... Uh, depth maps as you see here and using a, a, a completely standard control net and a very standard prompt etc with a few lauras in there for a sort of 1950s scene which came out fine I, I mean I, I think it's a perfectly good image uh, but it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit colourful and uh, it's not really what I wanted I wanted uh, more of a mood to it and it wasn't this image I was working on actually, but this is just to demonstrate the issue I was trying to address. So what I thought was, as I've been working on um, making uh, lights, rather like icy lights, to relight things, I thought to myself, well, actually, I've got this the wrong way around. I want to get the right. I want to get the lighting right in the first place. I don't want to do relighting. I want to do well. Uh, well, can we call it pre-lighting? So. To that end, I set about making a workflow that might do that. So, and that workflow is down here, and they are, I better turn all this lot off. Right, here we are. So, what I've done is, um, in my previous workflow, the, this, this lot was all joined together in one box. So, what I've done is uh, split them all apart, so you can uh, see how each light works. And we'll go through each light one by one. So, the first light is a spotlight which just is a round glow and I make the round glow by making a shape mask and I blur the mask, grow it and blur it and I put it on a 768 square. I then blow up that square, that's 248, so it's a big, now a big glow and it, you, you do this because um, this is quite computationally heavy and to do it on a 7, 768 is no trouble but uh, blurring a 2048 will take an awful lot longer. And here you can control, I put instructions on here, but you can control the size, shape. We'll demonstrate that. There we have a different shape light, just like that. We'll change that back. So you can make your light any shape. You have choices in here. You can have a square, you can have a triangle. So they could be, I could see those being useful in some circumstances. And the blur decides the softness. And then we literally just crop a bit of it out, uh, whichever bit. So I found the easiest way to move it around is, that's why I made it 248, uh, is you can just crop a bit out, which just makes it very easy. So to move your light, you, I put an instruction on here, uh, this workflow will be in the, in the uh, notes underneath the video. So you can move it up, move it down, move it left and right, and all is wonderful. And there's our glow. And I tint it using colour tint, which I find an extremely useful node. It really has all the colours you want. And so what we end up with is uh, a glow. And all of these sizes here are driven by some numbers down here. Because we need to have this constant size we're working with. I'm, this one, we're working with a 1216 by 832. So that, that, those numbers are fed to all the lights. Because otherwise it won't all join together. Okay, so that's our first light. That's our spotlight. So we can change its shape. We can change its size. We can put it anywhere in our picture. Which is just what we want. Now, the next thing is, is, is what do we put it on? Uh, sort of, you know, it's glowing, what's it glowing on? So what we do is make a patch of noise, which we make an image blank, make it 50% grey, this makes it grey, 127, 127, and, uh, and then we add noise to it in three colours, and then we resize it again to the same size, driven by those numbers over there, and in, then we tint that as well, and that results in a nice pretty blue, well not square, Rectangle. <laughs> but, um, and this is the base on which everything is going to sit on top of. The next light we want is a, I'm calling it an ambient light, but it's just a light to decide which direction the light is coming from. So if you have a gradient like this, the light's going to come from the left. If I flip the gradient just by rotating it, the light's going to be coming from the other way. Very easy. And this is again driven by the same image resize. So 
You can make complicated gradients by putting RGB numbers in here. I won't go over that, but uh, it's very easy. You can make you can make this gradient go through as many colors as you want. Uh, naught is one in hundred of the other, so you can go 50, 20, you go up in twenties if you want, and uh, really control what your gradient does. But we're not doing that. We're doing a very simple. Uh, the light's coming from this way gradient, and that's tinted again. Very very simple, and. Uh, the rotate allows you to have it make it go up and down, left and right, whatever you want really. And again, the size is driven by those numbers over there. So when that is combined with an image blend, with our noisy rectangle here, noisy blue rectangle, we get this. Just an overlay, you can try these different modes, you get all sorts of different effects, so you change the mode, and you see, I'm using overlay, but there's lots of different modes you can change here, all of which are a different effect. And they're fun to play with, and you can also percentage it in. But I want quite a subtle lean to the light. I just want the light to just generally come from that way. And that's made by joining these together with the image blend. And then I have another image blend here, where I'm dropping my spotlight in. And that's on a different mode, it's put in at screen. And uh, that's why I made the colour quite strong here, because screen is going to take out some of the colour. So we only have a bit of the yellow. So we have a nice soft yellowy glow. So that's the first three sections. And then I find it very useful to add a horizon line. So I've made a very simple gradient. By altering these numbers, the percentages, you can move this gradient line up and down. I've got an image rotate here just to just to get it. If I do want to flip it or anything for any reason, like it means I can rotate it around. I'm My colour tint is almost non-existent. It could be something, but I've got it more or less at zero. And again, it's resized with those same numbers which are coming in from over here. So everything is matching in numbers. If you don't match the numbers, your image blends will give you a nice box full of red type. And you wouldn't want that, would you? So we follow this along, I pipe this image along to another image blend. And we've not, this is put to dark and very simple. And it's only 23%. And this makes a nice defined horizon line there. Can there be more lights, you wonder? Well, of course there can. <laughs> there can always be more. So this is what I call a fill light. And what it is doing is deciding the angle of the light. So I want the light to come in from that angle. And, and I want to, uh, there a bit to be a bit of a colour grade. And uh, this light is made by creating a gradient, which is cropped and then turned with the image rotate. So this will only rotate in 90 degrees. But that's more than enough. So you can have it 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and uh, 90 degrees there. And fine tune the rotation. You can do it here. So you can have it really fine tuned. I just put it at 45 and then rotate it. You can get it from any, any corner you want. But you can move that to a different angle as well, if you so want. Once again, it's colour tinted and it's cyan this time. And then again, it's resized with those same numbers that are coming in. And then that's piped across to the final image blend, which gives us our final result. So we have our cyan angled making that. We have our light grayed on the background uh, noise. And we have our horizon. And this dark here, dark corner, is being done by this. So we've put together quite a complicated flow. So that's our finished noise shape, which is resized and sent off to the sampler. I found it, this works best. In fact, I. It was a bit of a discovery when I was making the other video that um, I'd been using this method with to, to relight an image, rather like I see light. But I discovered that it works far better uh, with a depth map and and high denoise. So here's um, our image that uh, we make a depth map of, and I want it flipped the other way round so it fits my uh, light shape better. And then it's just put through your ordinary control net, nothing special there. And I just run through the results and, and here you see how it looks and isn't it an improvement. And we have one refine, but uh, there's a few lines I don't like in there. But uh, and then you have an image that you could really take further. So I, I hope that was uh, helpful and uh, explained uh, the process a little more. Thanks for your attention.